diseases whose occurrence is primarily based on daily habits, day to day, of people and are a result of an inappropriate relationship of people with their environment. As I said, you can begin on any road and ultimately land up with a lifestyle disorder or a disease. There are several names that you can use. You can say lifestyle disease, western diseases, diseases of affluence, non-communicable diseases, degenerative diseases, chronic diseases. Whatever term you use, the result is it is loss of independence, years of disability or death, and impose a considerable economic burden on health services. This is the impact of the disorder disease that happens with relation to the lifestyle. When you say the word economic burden on health services, we need to share the risk factors that are similar to prolonged exposure to three modified lifestyle behaviors. Of course, smoking is the one which is a leading problem. The second one is unhealthy <coughs> diet and physical inactivity. As a dietitian or a nutritionist, I am much more interested on the unhealthy diet. But smoking is something also which is going inside and causing a problem. And physical inactivity. I always believe that you know, even the newborn knows that they have to be flinging their arms and legs in the air. Okay? Innately programmed, they know that they need to do exercise. So they are already cycling away in the air. It's not for nothing because a child who, who is flaccid, who is not doing that activity, is not the child that's going to cry and ask for the mother to give milk at all. So even a newborn boy, child knows, infant knows that they have to do some physical activity. It is an innate part of us. And when we look at these three important modifiable, modifiable lifestyle behaviors, because they result in the development of chronic diseases, specifically health disease like stroke, diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. We could we didn't have gas to start our cooking immediately. You have to search for wood and then we have to set the fire and start cooking and so you know. If I did something more so that I could save it for the other point of time. The best way of doing that was to put it in water and leave it that way. Over a period of time, what happened? The men eat the rice and the water is drunk by the lady. Why? Because they thought that the water is only tangi There is no food. The man eats. He is eating big food. He is drinking nutritious with it. And what was Khalid eaten with? Nowadays it is eaten with pickle or just plain salt or something like that. But you don't know what was the combination. They ate with onion. They ate with raw, whatever thing was there along with it. Somewhere they was getting, we really don't know the level of malnutrition that was there. Nobody has got evidence on it. Can you and I, in this present stage, eat only paye then survive? The answer is no. Then why are we talking about something which is not relevant? If we are not analyzing it in the right way, we are doing ourselves a harm. But now, you know, it is like neonatologists who are saying, children in ICU, NICU can be rubbed with coconut oil because that gives them energy. All of us should be applying coconut oil and getting energy. Why should we be eating? I can't understand where these theories are coming from. And this is what really hurts me. Please understand, this slide is basically to tell